hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell is he doing lying down in a graveyard? Well, <laughs> I can only say I hope the residents of this place don't mind me doing this because it is for a good cause so I'm sure they wouldn't mind. And in today's video I'm going to talk to you about a wonderfully delicate little wildflower that is widespread throughout the UK and is an absolutely vital resource for many of our butterfly species. Now the plant I'm of course referring to is the common or dog violet or common dog violet. It's got a few names and it's right next to me here as you can see and it is absolutely stunning. I'll put a few close-ups in but what a cracking little wildflower. So understated but it really is an absolute gem. Now I've come to this graveyard because, I mean, I didn't know it was here, but I was just looking at a job that we are going to be doing up the road uh, in the summertime. But um, I came here because it is absolutely uh, full of wildflowers. Now, I I've just done a short recently on um, coming to your, or getting out to your local um, church or graveyard to have a look for wildflowers, obviously, you know, providing you are permitted to do so. Um, because they are a brilliant place to look for wildflowers because of course the ground is undisturbed for often centuries. I mean these gravestones are very very old. So old in fact that I can't see any of the original um, engravings on them to say when the date is. Um, but yes graveyards are and churchyards are a really really good place to uh, obviously get around to have a look for wildflowers. I mean on the other side of this church at the moment it's absolutely awash with snowdrops that are just starting to go over now. Of course it's the uh, middle of March and um, but they are also absolutely covered in primroses as well so primroses, snowdrops, there's bluebells coming up in the um, under the trees over there already not flowering but of course they are just poking their heads up. Um, so it is a really good place to come and see um, a lot of native, particularly spring bulbs of course, um, before obviously they then sort of start to shade over a lot of the time. A lot of churchyards have a lot of uh, wooded areas of course and trees so once the canopy closes up obviously that's kind of the end of the spring flowering season. Uh, but primroses, cowslips, snowdrops, bluebells, dog violets, uh, they are a really good place so uh, do get out and check your local uh, church out and have a look to see what you can find I'm sure you'll be astonished and obviously obviously a lot of churches have some wonderful displays as well of uh, things like daffodils and crocuses as well so really nice this time of year but I just wanted to highlight the importance of this wonderful little plant and how um, you should or why you should be adding it to your garden now the dog violet is uh, one of the sole food plants for many of our very rare and in even endangered species of butterfly, things such as the high brown fritillary, uh, which is uh, a very rare species in the UK. I've never actually seen one. Uh, but also our more common species such as silver wash fritillary, dark green fritillary, small pearl bordered fritillary and pearl bordered fritillary. So the fritillary family rely on this a lot as a larval food plant uh, and in particular they will lay their eggs on these plants or if not on them uh, in the case of things like silver wash fritillary they will lay their eggs actually in the bark of oak trees, quite a fascinating habit, and the caterpillars will then crawl down to find the dog violets and then of course munch away on the uh, leaves of these, these lovely sort of dark green heart shaped leaves of these plants uh, before pupating and then obviously turning into the adult. So they are really a crucial plant so um, keep your eyes out for them when you're travelling around. In the case of things like the small pearl border fritillary and the pearl border fritillary, they are found on more of a um, sort of a heathland site. I've seen them in the North Yorkshire moors and uh, they are not very easy to spot as a butterfly but they do have kind of discrete isolated colonies. Um, but they are a wonderful insect of course and uh, one that relies solely on this. Where this is found in a slightly different habitat, it's more in amongst the kind of fringes of bracken uh, that this will proliferate so um, yes a bit of a different habitat but in general dog violets you can find them almost anywhere mostly in kind of woodland settings um, heathland open ground um, so they really are quite a versatile plant they do go very well in shade and um, the great news is for you guys you can get some on the wildyourgarden.com website uh, so do check that out and see if you can get some in your garden. They are a really great little plant and not only obviously for the larval food plants of these butterflies which I should add you probably shouldn't expect to get uh, silverwash. Well silverwash fritillary 
probably the most common. I've seen it in one or two gardens, nectarine on Budlia. Uh, but in general, you're not likely to get any of the uh, previously named butterflies coming and laying eggs on or around these dog violets. But they are a really good plant for nectar, of course, as well for smaller insects, smaller um, solitary bees and things that might be emerging. Generally, they'll be flowering from April through to June, but uh, obviously with these <laughs> the climates these days, they are now flowering in, well, it's not even the middle of March, it's the 10th of March today. So um, obviously flowering earlier and earlier, a lot of these things. So yes, common dog violets, I strongly recommend you get some. They're a lovely little splash of purple at this time of year, as you can see. And one that I would highly recommend for a shady area. So thanks very much for watching guys. Please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give the video a like and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.